Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and this is our full review of the iPad Mini. Let's get to it. Apple doesn't want you to think of the iPad Mini as a 7-inch tablet. They want you to think of it as a smaller, lighter iPad. It's a subtle nuance, but helps to explain the price tag of the iPad Mini, which is far above its closest competitor, the Nexus 7. We'll talk more about pricing later. Let's take a closer look at the iPad Mini's hardware. The build quality on the iPad Mini is very, very high. Like the full-sized iPad, the iPad Mini is made from glass and metal, but on the Mini, the use of these materials is much more striking because of its impossibly lightweight and incredibly thin profile. We're so used to the too heavy weight on the 9.7-inch iPad that the iPad Mini feels like the opposite extreme. Our review unit was black, which takes a lot of cues from the black iPhone 5 in terms of the gunmetal backing and shiny beveled edge. The white model, like the white iPhone 5, has silver metal on the back and a chrome beveled edge. If you want to hide fingerprints, you should definitely go with the white. In hand, the iPad mini is effortless to hold at just 308 grams and 7.2 millimeters in depth, which is thinner than any smartphone we've ever tested. When you pick up the mini after not using it for a while, it's cool to the touch, like the iPhone 5. It's wider than the Nexus 7, making it a little bit difficult to hold if you're wrapping your fingers around the edge with one hand. The extra width also means that unlike the Nexus 7, the iPad mini doesn't really fit into a pant pocket or a jacket pocket. But that extra width provides a lot more screen than on the Nexus 7, but it also means that the bezels are super thin and a little bit too thin to hold unless you have really small fingers. Fortunately, Apple has employed finger rejection software to ignore presses occurring along the side bezels. It worked quite well. We recently did a Nexus 7 versus iPad mini comparison, and we recommend that you go back and watch that video if you're comparing both. Let's talk more about the screen. At 7.9 inches and 1024 by 768 resolution, the iPad mini has the same resolution as the iPad 2, but because the display is smaller, the pixels are slightly smaller as well, lending to a higher PPI of 162 versus 131 on the iPad 2. Comparatively, the Nexus 7 with its 1280 by 800 7 inch screen has a PPI of 215. Again, if you're staying below that 300 PPI range, you're going to be able to see pixels no matter what. If you're coming from the iPad 3 or 4, which has the Retina display, you'll absolutely notice the difference as up close text and graphics appear pixelated. But if you hold the mini at a bit less than arm's length away from your eyes, you really don't notice the lower resolution. This is the compromise you'll have to make if you're sensitive about low resolution screens. It's not a deal breaker, but definitely something to consider. We should also note that because the iPad mini has a four x three aspect ratio display, you get black bars whenever watching video filmed in 16 by nine. This is something that iPad owners have probably gotten used to by now. Save for the resolution, the iPad mini's display is terrific, providing fantastic color saturation and contrast that Apple mobile device displays are known for. Viewing angles are also quite good. Now let's talk about specs. The iPad mini essentially has the same internals as the iPad 2, and it has a dual core A5 chip with 512 megabytes of RAM. This is a bit of a downgrade from the latest iPad 4, which has double the RAM and the new A6X CPU. However, with far fewer pixels to push, the iPad mini doesn't need such brawny hardware, which can also compromise battery life. We found performance to be spirited with snappy app load times and smooth web browsing performance. Gaming too looked great on the iPad mini, except when pushed to the edge with some high FPS titles that would cause the game to drop some frames and experience lag. But for most games, the iPad mini can keep up just fine, and in fact, we found that the gaming experience on the mini to be better and more natural than the 9.7 inch iPad thanks to the mini's lighter weight. The cameras have been upgraded on the iPad mini and we're quite impressed. The camera on the rear is a similar camera to what is found on the iPhone 4. And the resulting 5 megapixel pictures are actually quite good with great low light and macro performance. The camera on the front is capable of recording 720p video, which made FaceTime calls look better. It's also great in low light. Now let's talk about software. Perhaps the most compelling reason to get the iPad mini is not because of its hardware, but because of its app selection. While we continue to be bored of iOS, we're not bored of the endless selection of high quality tablet apps that let just look just fine on the iPad's smaller display. Android fans might be tired of hearing about this app selection thing, but it makes a huge difference in the user experience. There's an iPad app for just about everything. The Android tablet app story is still a mess. 
Now, on to some test notes. Wi-Fi performance on the iPad mini was slightly above average in terms of signal strength, providing an extra bar of coverage when in the outer limit of a Wi-Fi connection. Typing on the iPad mini in portrait is very usable. We've been waiting for better portrait typing on the iPad mini for quite some time, and while the split keyboard option on the 9.7 inch model makes it easier, typing on the iPad mini in portrait is like using a big smartphone, it's much more natural. And typing in landscape is also quite comfortable. The new smart cover, a still too expensive 39 bucks, lacks the metal edge of the 9.7 inch smart cover. It also has two folds instead of three, which really doesn't make a difference. It works quite well and provides a good viewing angle when watching video and is sturdy enough to stay in place when using it to browse the web on a tabletop. Battery life on the iPad mini is impressive. In our testing, it lasted around 10 hours of mixed usage. And since most people will use their iPad mini for just a couple of hours per day, you might not need to charge the mini but once every week or so. As far as charging goes, we found the iPad 3 to take entirely too long to charge, requiring a full 7 hours to go from 0 to 100%. The iPad mini obviously has a smaller battery, and interestingly comes with the iPhone's 5 watt charger. Using that, the mini powers up in about 3.5 hours. What happens if you use the 10 watt charger from the iPad 3 or even the 12 watt charger from the iPad 4? It does indeed charge faster, about 25% faster to be exact. Of course, you shouldn't make a habit of charging the iPad mini with a charger not intended for it. Finally, the pricing of the iPad mini is suspect. It starts at $329, but can cost as much as $659 with 64 gigabytes of storage and the cellular data option. With $129 premium over the base Nexus 7, Apple is making a statement that the iPad mini is in another leak. And they are kind of right. The iPad is the most mature tablet you can buy in terms of app selection, and that really matters. So with the $129 premium, you're paying for that. So here's what we like and don't like about the iPad mini. We like that the build quality is the best of any tablet we've ever used. We like that iOS still has the best selection of tablet apps and that they all run great on the iPad mini, save for some really intense games. And we like that the iPad mini's performance is plenty fast in day-to-day -day use. We don't like that the iPad mini is awkwardly wide for a 7-inch class tablet, making it strange to hold at times and nearly impossible to fit into a pocket. We don't like that the price is significantly higher than the Nexus 7. And finally, we don't like that iOS has become boring and unchanged after all this time. So in conclusion, we give the iPad mini an 8.5 out of 10. It's like a smaller iPad, and that's a really good thing, but it's thinner and lighter, which is something we've been waiting for for a very long time. We just wish it was a little bit less expensive and it had a higher resolution display, but of course these things will work themselves out over time. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and let us know what you think about the iPad mini. And of course, be sure to watch pocketnow.com where we're gonna have the full review with lots more detail than we gave in this video. Thanks for watching, that's it for now.